The sky is falling. You'd think so if you believe the hairsprayed chicken littles who blab the evening news. Everything's gonna kill us. Booze, rare steaks, eggs, and the greatest danger, the true Satan in the eyes of the modern day Puritans is my good friend, the cigarette. Are you expecting somebody else with the three lighter code? Sorry, I'm just, I'm just a little jumpy. Why all the cloak and dagger stuff? I didn't want anybody to see us together. It's, it, it's too dangerous. You want to tell me why? I'm scheduled to testify before the grand jury. Cigarette tampering, you, you know. I need you to keep this for me. If, if I wind up, if, if I don't testify, you have to take this to, to them yourself. What, is somebody threatening you? What's wrong? I gotta go. I gotta go. Joe, Joe. I finished last in the 50-yard dash, winded, gasping, wheezing. Artie Chilton was finished as well. A whistleblower, a key witness in a tobacco company lawsuit. I barely knew him, but I knew this. Artie would never blow that whistle, and I didn't have the breath to blow it for him. Arthur Chilton, a tobacco company whistleblower, was dead because I smoked too much. Now I was out to find the smoking gun that killed him. Hey, Sullivan says you can't describe the shooter. No, I didn't get close enough to see his face. How do you know it's a heat? These days, who the hell knows? Who's the stiff? Name is Arthur Chilton, botanist for the Minuteman Tobacco Company. A client of yours? For about five minutes, this was our first meet. So what do you want? Protection. Protection? From who? I don't know. Come on, Mike. Don't hold back on me. Skip, I am not holding back. You know the thing that really bothers me? I couldn't stop this thing. Oh, come on, Mike. This isn't the first client you lost. Yeah. It's the first time I ever lost a client because I couldn't run fast enough. Well, don't be so hard on yourself. You know, the older we get, the slower we run. Skip, this is not about being slow. I couldn't breathe. Well, lay off the butts. Hey, maybe you should just lay off, period. You want a different answer? See a different doctor. You say one word about this to Maggie, you know. There are a lot more old smokers than old doctors. But if I was going to quit my three-pack-a-day hobby, I'd need a hand and some legs. Can you really tell that much from a preliminary exam? Yeah, you should have come to see me a lot sooner. What you need is a woman to take care of you. Make sure you eat right. Get plenty of cardiovascular stimulation. How about a bicycle bill for two? That could be interesting. In the meantime, though, you have to quit smoking. When? Now. Are my x-rays really that bad? Well, take a look. You're an ideal candidate for lung cancer. Well, listen, it might be a little more clear if you turn the light box on. It is turned on, and so am I. I don't have one of those cushy jobs you retire from and die with the same number of holes in your body you're born with. When you've been shot at, stabbed at, pummeled, and smacked around as much as I have, the last thing you stay up nights worrying about is cancer. 
and a dame in a white lab coat says the word and the seed is planted. So I decided to kick the habit rather than kick the bucket. And how hard could it be? Weaker men than I do it all the time. It's just a matter of willpower, a habit I could break. As easy to walk away from as a sucker bed at the track or a shot of watered down booze at the corner saloon. Or maybe just one. One for the road, one smoke won't kill me. I won't inhale. Hell, it worked for Clinton. Why not me? Come on, Mike, light me up. It's me, your buddy, your ever faithful pal. Who stuck by your mom? Huh? I did. Who saw you through the hard times? It was me. Smoke, smoke, smoke that cigarette. I need to talk to you. What is it, Maya? I'm gonna be Sue. Sue? She's gonna sue me. My yoga student is gonna sue me because she come to my class, she hurts herself, I didn't push her, and now it's my fault. Well, did, did you sign a waiver? Waiver? What was a waiver? You've got insurance, don't you? No, I don't have any insurance. Why I need the insurance for? I have it for seven years, successful yoga studio. Why to buy one? I understand. What, what you really need is a lawyer. I have you. No, 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 Maya. I cannot represent you in court. Why not? Because I am not a lawyer, I'm a private dick. What? How dare you talk to me dirty? What? Hey, you got anything for me? Good morning to you, too. Yeah, Arthur Chilton got a job at Minuteman Tobacco right out of college. With two PhDs in biochemistry and botany. Specialized in plant genetics. Chilton's done a lot of traveling on company business, mostly to Minuteman's tobacco farms in Brazil. What about personal finances? I'm having some trouble getting the records, but I'll keep checking. Make it fast. Are you okay, Mike? Never better. Why? Hey, Mike. What? I, I just wanted to know if you found anything on the disc that Chilton gave you. Very little. I spent most of last night on my laptop, and I came up with a bunch of formulas and percentage charts, mostly about the chemical content of tobacco. Now, if you need me, I will be at the Minuteman R&D lab. Meanwhile, I would like for you to go over this disc and see if there's anything worth killing for. I would kill for one of these. Okay, maybe I was a little tense, but I hadn't had a smoke in 12 hours. Not that I was counting. But I was counting on Kevin Kistler at the Minuteman Tobacco Company for help in finding Artie's killer. Mr. Kistler? Mr. Hammers here. Kevin Kistler. Mike Hammer. Walter, could you excuse us, please? You said you had some questions about Arthur Chilton. Yeah, I do. Thanks for seeing me on such short notice. No problem. Cigarette? No. Thanks. So have the police figured out who killed Arthur? They're working on it. How well did you know him? He kept to himself. His nose was always buried in his work or out in one of the test fields. Children lived for his job. What was his job exactly? Mr. Hammer, surely you don't expect me to discuss company secrets with an outsider? Don't worry, I'm inside. As you know, our industry is under fire. Yeah, I know. Well, can you at least tell me this? Was everything that he worked on classified? Not technically. What does Arthur's work have to do with his death? It was a robbery, right? Not technically. He bred tobacco plants, Mr. Hammer. Bug resistant, highly fragrant, low in tar, trying to build a better mousetrap, if you will. This is one of his projects. You sure you won't try it? Uh, no, I'm trying to get out of that particular mousetrap. Mm -hmm. What about nicotine levels? What about them? Was he working on those? Arthur worked on everything involved in tobacco horticulture. Which is why the grand jury asked him to testify. Look, I don't know why they asked him to testify. They're hauling everybody in there. It's just another fishing expedition. They've made us into cartoon villains. They've turned us into the Nazis of the 90s. Look, I think that's all, Mr. Hammer. Dina? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to work into such a fury. Could you show Mr. Hammer out, please? Thanks. Mr. 
Is he always this helpful? Call me later. We have to talk. Sorry to keep you waiting, Mrs. Joke. If I knew you were coming, I'd have eaten the cake. It's okay. I would have telephoned. I didn't want anyone to know I called you. Oh, please, sit down. Can I get you anything? A uh, Twinkie? Coffee? No, no, I'm wired enough as it is. Listen, I want you to know I'm sorry about what happened to Arthur. If it wasn't for me, he might still be alive. If it wasn't for you, that disc he gave you might have been lost. How do you mean? Someone ransacked the house. They took his papers, discs, computer. Did the police know anything about this? They don't know who broke in. They don't know who killed Arthur. Do you? No. But I know that his work had something to do with this. Like what? He'd been really nervous lately. Uh, not eating, not sleeping, working on the computer at all hours. Any idea what he was working on? Didn't you look at the disc he gave you? A part of it was encrypted. We're still trying to figure it out. It's a new hybrid tobacco. He was really excited about it, but then something changed. He looked different. Panicked. Please let me know if you find out anything. I want the bastards who snuffed out Artie's life. Thank you for your time, Mr. Hammer. Not a problem. Artie's widow had to run, but his assistant, Dina, had to talk. Artie Chilton was my friend. That's the only reason why I'm here. I understand. Can you tell me what he was working on? Minuteman wanted to double the nicotine levels of regular tobacco so they could make their cigarettes more addictive. And did he succeed? Better than they dreamed. Artie developed a tobacco plant with three and a half times the nicotine. Hmm. What did he do with it? Seeds were put into cigarette packs, sealed on the packaging machines, and then smuggled to Brazil. That's where the first crops were grown. And they were imported back here. But couldn't the customs inspectors tell the difference? Looks like regular tobacco. Besides, the government's more worried about tariffs, bugs, and legal pesticides, not chemical content. While Dina was shining some light on Artie's murder, a couple of thugs were about to turn the lights out on Nick and Velda. The Surgeon General was right. Smoking is hazardous to your health. Artie Chilton was dead, and now Nick and Velda were in trouble. I wasn't doing so great myself. With a cold beer in one hand, I wanted a burning butt in the other. I was learning the hard way. Smoking is not an easy habit to kick. Come on, bitch! Give me my cigarettes! Crazy nicotine addicts. Hey, hey, take it easy, huh? I understand what he's going through. So tell me something. If Arthur Chilton developed a secret weapon for Minuteman Tobacco, why did he suddenly decide to testify before the grand jury? Rumors that Minuteman was selling cigarettes containing the so-called super tobacco began to circulate. Minuteman denied it. They claimed to be the victim of anti-smoking zealots. So Minuteman lied. Why did Arthur Chilton decide to tell the truth? This may sound quaint, but it was a matter of conscience. And he paid for his principles with his life. Do you have any idea who killed him? A couple of months ago, Artie was called into Kevin Kistler's office. When he came back, he could barely stand. He was shaking so hard. Did Kistler threaten him? Artie wouldn't say. But after that, he was terrified that they would find out he was scheduled to testify. And did they find out? Artie's dead. What do you think? If Dina was right, Artie's testimony would have been a political hydrogen bomb, blowing the lid off years of tobacco industry lies. Billions were at stake, and men have killed for a lot less. I smell trouble on the home front. And I was right. Nick and Velda had been jumped, and I was Jonesy. Okay. So what happened? There were men with guns. And 45s. And bad tempers. Well, are you two all right? Yeah. Yeah. What'd they get? Chilton's disc. Ch oh, great! What's going on with you two? Nothing. Nothing. 
Hey, Mike, these ropes are cutting off my blood. Not all of it. I needed a breath of stale air, so I went home, just in time to get a call from a Minuteman Tobacco Company lawyer named Randall Herndon. Yeah. Yeah, yeah uh, it's me. Tomorrow? Okay, I'll be there. I've often wondered how slime buckets like Herndon go home at night, throw the car keys down, and face their kids saying, Daddy had a good day at work today. I was ready to kill for a cigarette. Thank you for coming by, Mr. Hammer. Please have a seat. Oh, no, thanks. I'll stand. No. So, tell me about Artie Chilton. Well, Arthur Chilton was brilliant. The cigars and cigarettes being developed from his newly patented variety of tobacco will dominate the market for decades to come. Sounds like a valuable employee. Valuable, yes. But difficult. Difficult? How so? Chilton was conducting his own research, research that wasn't sanctioned by this company. What kind of research? That isn't important. What is important is that Chilton demanded ownership of some patents. Of course we said no. Patents? On what? Tobacco. Do you know how much a newly patented product is worth in our industry? Well, I know how much I spent on your old product. I'd say millions. Billions. But it's company policy. If you design it here, it stays here. It belongs to us. Give me cigarettes or give me death. Oh, you're a brave man, Mr. Hammer. Picking on the tobacco industry in today's climate? <laughs> that takes real courage. Well, I wonder if you have the courage to face this. I think that Arthur Chilton was the goose that laid the golden egg, and he was planning to scramble the reputation of Minutemen Tobacco in front of a grand jury, and that's why somebody rubbed him out. Do you honestly believe we'd kill someone over cigarettes? No. Cigarettes have never killed anyone. <laughs> better have something for me. Okay, I do. We got Chilton's financial records. He was making $60,000 a year, but... Now, I'm not talking about the case. I'm talking about donuts. And there are no colors and there are no Twinkies, but there is buttermilk. Chilton had three bank accounts totaling almost a quarter million dollars. And he had a house in Monte Carlo. Oh. Seems like old Chilton was getting a little on the side, huh? <laughs> Velda. I want the dates when those accounts were opened and escrow closed. You got them? Yeah, somewhere. And you know something? There's no cinnamon rolls. You know the ones with the little o? Mm -hmm. My appetite for sweets was only matched by my hunger for the truth. Usually, with murder, nobody talks. But on this case, everybody was talking. Kistler at the lab, Dina, Ariana Chilton, the lawyer Herndon. With so many people willing to help, why wasn't I any closer to catching Artie's killer? Thousands had been run through Chilton's bank. That sent me running to Staten Island for a gap with the girl on the go, Ariana Chilton. You have her. What are you doing here? A lot less exercise than you. You, uh, you run a lot? About 70 miles a week. In this rain, that's a lot of pavement. Keeps me sane. Come on in. So you find anything out about Artie's murder? Did uh, you and Artie ever spend much time out of the country? On his salary? No, he only traveled on business. So money was tight. By the time the bills were paid, we were lucky if we had enough to catch a movie. Really? Because the bank records show that Artie had $250,000 in an offshore account entitled to a house in Monte Carlo. What? You didn't know about that? Of course I didn't. Well, why do you think he kept it from you? Artie was a dreamer. He always talked about retiring early. I guess that was what he meant. 
Those bastards. Those people won't let you walk away. Yeah, I guess it's easier to quit the company than it is to kick the habit, huh? Speaking of which, uh, you don't by any chance have... No, no. Thanks. I struck out with Artie's family, so I made the long ride back to the city and sat up late with Velda looking into the corporate family. The Sterlings of Virginia, owners of the Minuteman Tobacco Company. Minuteman is chaired by Augustus Hancock Sterling. People refer to him as the general. Now, the president and CEO is his son, Augie, Augustus Hancock Sterling II. Now, stay with me here. The chief operating officer is Marcus Aurelius. Oh, really? Yes. He's a general son from his second wife. Hmm. Who is, who is this Luli character? Julius Llewellyn Sterling. He's Augie's brother. He's on the board, but he'd rather race stock cars on the circuit. <sighs> Luli, Augie, I mean, their parents must have really loved them. Well, the first Mrs. Sterling, she died in a mental institution, and the second Mrs. G, she lives in Paris. Augie's wife, Margaret, she's mm -hmm. been in and out of rehab seven times in four years. Who's her sponsor, Rob Roy? What is it? Oh, hi, Skip. No, I'm all right. No, 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 I'm fine. No, Skip, I'm not angry. No, I'm not. Yeah, I would like a smoke. All right, I'm on my way. What? No one ever calls late at night with good news. And Skip's call was as bad as it gets. Another victim, another life snuffed out. Skip, what do you got? A floater. The best way to stop smoking is to carry wet matches. Now Dina had gone to the giant ashtray in the sky. The body. Dina Torvald was dead, the latest victim of someone's anti-anti-smoking campaign. Dina, like her murdered boss, Arthur Chilton, had the courage to come forward. And like her boss, Dina had paid with her life. But not without putting up a struggle. A fighter to the end, Dina had torn a zipper from her killer's coat. What, do you have a personal vendetta against me? You shock me, Barry. You know I love you, like a tax audit. Well, as usual, you're two for two. A critical case, I need two people, you meet up with them and they're both dead. With any luck, you may be the hat trick. You got a smoke? I thought you quit. I did. Try the patch. The patch? I needed a nicotine blanket and some answers. The next day, I paid a visit to Minuteman, just in time to catch the pitch from ad man Ernie Nathan. We're going to put Puff Puff on a boat. Wasn't he on a boat last year? Yeah, crossing the Delaware. But this time, he's going to be on the open ocean on a Coast Guard cutter saving stranded young sailors on a desert island. Young sailors, Nathan, an awful faggy. We'll throw in a few female sailors. Now, what do these sailors want? Do they want water? No. Do they want food? I don't think so. What they want is their bunny blues, and they want them now. Cut to happy sailors, happy sailors, smoke, 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 puff, 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 our signature bunny blue cigarettes. Now, wait a minute then, Nathan. What about our bunny pinks? Hold on to your seat. We're going to have Puff Puff at a beauty pageant, wearing a pink bustier and high heels. He comes in for the swimsuit company. Sorry, nicotine lover. Presentation is over. Now, anybody who was not Augie or Marcus Sterling, hippity hop out of here. Excuse me, sir. <clears throat> Stuff the bunny. Hey, I want him. Minuteman Tobacco's got a new ad campaign and a new poster boy, and I'm it. Got a minute? Got a smoke. Well, that's great, but you went for information, not a job. Well, now I got both. Isn't that a little conflict of interest? Actually, it's compounded interest. That check would choke a horse. How can you be selling cigarettes when you're trying to quit smoking? How can you be talking when you're supposed to be working? You know, I know quitting smoking is supposed to save his life, but man, he's killing me. Wanna grab a burger at Ray's, my treat? I'd love to. I'm starving. Great.
Very much. While Nick and Velda locked lips in the office, Augie and Marcus locked horns in Virginia. Are you sure this hammer guy is our spokesman is such a good idea? You got a great look, Marcus. Our advertising campaign's been a little lackluster of late. But he is a detective, and he's been snooping around the headquarters digging for debt. No, oh, he'll stop nosing around once we toss the big bucks his way. Don't be so sure, Augie. Not everybody can be bought. Sure they can. Besides, General loves this Minuteman concept. It's the first thing he's been open to since the Constitutional Convention. Well, I still don't like this idea. Don't be such a worry ward, Marcus. Hammer meets the family, gets the General's approval. He's back in New York on the company payroll. I sure hope you're right, Augie. But I think this Hammer is going to be awfully hard to contain. That's why the General has me do the thinking. Okay, hot boy, now you, you look here. You look in the lens. Okay. No, you gotta smoke. It's an advertisement. No smoking. I won't inhale. No, no, no smoke, no, no. smoking, no smoking, okay? Okay, ready? Blow that smoke. Well, how can I blow the smoke? Here? Act. Maybe you try acting, okay? Let's try that sometime, okay? Okay. Oh, oh, fabulous, fabulous. Oh, the camera loves, who does the camera love? The camera loves you. No, 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 hot boy, bad hot boy. Don't, don't, no smoking, no smoking. Okay, look, look your head. Good, come on, come on, baby. Okay, what are you doing? I'm gonna smash you like a cockroach if you keep doing that, okay? Now, let's try it. Hey, look, look, look at me. Smolder, smolder. Ooh, anger, intensity. All right, no, no smoking, no smoking, hold it. Oh, sell it, sell it, come on, baby. Sell it to me, baby, sell it to me, baby. Come on, come on, sell it. Hey, what are you doing, hot boy? Hot, hot boy, what you, my God. Oh, my camera! My camera! My camera! Yeah, what is it? No, no, my camera! You broke my camera! You're a genius. My baby. The general's gonna love you. Yeah, when do I get a chance to meet the general? You don't get a chance to meet him. You're summoned. How's that? Perfect. Can I help you? Julius Llewellyn Sterling, looking for my camera. I was partner, Nick Farrell. What can we do for you? Luli Sterling. I understand Hammer's investigating the deaths of those two whistleblowers, Chilton and Torvald. I wanted to discuss a few things with him. Well, he's not here right now. Would you like to wait? Well, <laughs> frankly, I'd rather talk to you. Can I interest you in uh, going somewhere for a drink? What? No, I don't think so, man. Uh, excuse me, Mr. Luli. I need to speak to him. We'll be right back, okay? That guy's hitting on me. I'm getting ready to hit him. Nick, he's a Sterling, right? Yeah. Well, he's come here with information, maybe important information, right? Yeah. So let him give it to you. Excuse me? Not in that way. Well, in what way? You have a drink, you listen, you smile, you come back and you report. You've done it before. It's easy. Yeah, but the guy's gay. Nick. It's your job. Just do it. So why'd you want to see mine? I want to tell him how much I hate what my family is doing. Which is what? Playing with the public's trust. All in the interest of selling more cigarettes. I've decided to talk to the grand jury. All right. What are you going to tell him? Everything. I know all the details. And where all the bodies are buried. See, nicotine tampering is just the tip of the iceberg. Well, what if someone from Minuteman had Chilton and Torval killed? What makes you think they're not gonna kill you too? First of all, they don't know what I'm doing. And secondly, I talked to the DA's office. They're putting me in protective custody tomorrow. I hope so. I hate to see you killed too. <laughs> When I die, it'll be in a blaze of burning gasoline at the track. It's pretty gruesome. Yeah. Well, I'm a gruesome sort of guy. <sighs> Listen, I'll catch you later. Thanks for the drink. My pleasure. 
You're not gay, are you? No. Too bad. Nick's quickie cocktail with Luli made it clear. Luli was the pink sheep of his family. At home, I was just in time for an ugly run-in with a pink rabbit who was stewing. Puff Puff. I've slugged it out with the worst of them. Drug dealers, hitmen, Yankee fans. But this was a first. A crazy wabbit Puff Puff. The Pied Piper who encouraged kids to light up. I was gonna put his lights out. Thumper, what's going on? Hop on up here. No, 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 no. Come on, I'm not gonna hurt you. Oh, yeah, since when? Get out of here, you're insane. I'm insane? You attack me, you dumb bunny. Yeah, that's what they like. That's what they like. That's why I got fired. You're perfect for their macho man new image. Hey, I did not ask to be Minuteman. Yeah, but they hired you anyway. If I'm not Puff Puff, I'm nothing. Well, look at it this way, Puff Puff. You can always entertain the kids at Easter. Hi, Megs. Never. Cigars, cigarettes, chipperillos, pipes filtered, unfiltered, Turkish blend, matches, chew, dip, a pinch between the cheek and gum, flints, fluid, Cuban savannas, ashtrays, first smoke of the morning. Last smoke in the pack. Swirling clouds of blue rising into the night sky. Tar, nicotine, hand rolled, cut leaf, white burly, snuff. God, I love this stuff. Full pack, carton. Close cover before striking. Come to where the flavor is. Cool. Tastes good like a cigarette should. Jesse Helms. Smooth, a long drag. Smoke rings. Inhale the peace pipe. You've come a long way, baby. Come to where the flavor is. My camera country. Just listen to the sound of my voice, Mike, and relax. Just relax. How do you feel? I feel like a cigarette. No. You feel liberated from the shackles of tobacco. Smoking is slavery. Smoking is my hobby. Smoking was your hobby. Just concentrate, Mike. I am reprogramming your senses. What once gave you pleasure will now give you pain. When I say cigarettes, what comes to mind? Life. No. Death. When I say coughing, what comes to mind? Uh, exercise. No. Suffocation. When I say nicotine-stained fingers, what do you see? A golden tan. Listen, Mike, I know that this is difficult. Just focus uh -huh. and trust that I am on your side. You're an addict. It's not a reflection on your character. What are you seeing, Mike? A reflector. Excuse me? Wanda. <laughs> You're beautiful. <laughs> Booze hounds give up the grape one day at a time. Maybe that would work for me with smokes. Take the 12 steps. But right now, I was more interested in taking down a killer, a woman who was always one step ahead of me, Arthur Chilton's fleet-footed bride, Ariana. Mr. Hammer. It wasn't Minute Man after all, now was it, sweetheart? I beg your pardon? When did you find out that your husband was having an affair with Dina Torvald? I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, yes, you do. It's the old story. A woman scorned. So she takes care of her husband and his mistress. You and Dina Torvald were in a race for your husband's affections, but you knew you weren't going to win, so you polished off the competition. <laughs> Dina was a lot tougher than you thought. Unfortunately, you're the one who got nailed. Your plan got caught in your zipper. You'll never prove that I killed Artie. 
When you found out that Artie was going to have a meeting with me, you followed him and you killed him, thinking that Minuteman would be the focus of any investigation. And you're a runner, so you figured, there's no way I can catch you. You had the best equipment, right down to the reflectors on your running shoes. But there's no way you're going to run from this one, sweetheart. We got a rabbit! We got a rabbit! I'll get her. A shot. You like rabbit stew? I might not have had the breath to outrun Ariana, but I did have enough strength to pull Betsy's trigger. Ariana the runner stumbled, undone by jealousy and hatred. She wasn't Superman after all. She wasn't faster than a speeding bullet. Hey, Mike. Look what I found wandering around outside. Hey, Val, want to join us for a drink? Um, no. Actually, I'm supposed to be meeting someone, but um, I guess he's a no-show. Hey, what's wrong with a couple of handsome fellows like us? I'll take a rain check, thanks. See you tomorrow, Mike? Night, sweetheart. Give me a beer. Well, hi, honey. How was your day? I've had better. I don't know when. You nailed your killer. Yeah, but this case isn't over yet, Skip. What's that supposed to mean? Hey, Nick. Want a brew? No, I'm supposed to be meeting someone, but I don't think she's here. Oh, well, maybe she's late. I don't know when it's late. I'll wait outside, see you guys. So why isn't this case over? We only nabbed one person. Two masked robbers tied up Nick and Belda and stole Arthur Chilton's disc. Well, maybe Ariana had accomplices. Skip, Ariana Chilton was a jealous wife. She wasn't a co-conspirator. Well, Mike, how you doing kicking the butts? Speaking of butts, look who's here. Why isn't Lily Sterling here? Hello, Barry. Why the sudden interest in Lulu? You coming out of the closet? He's critical to my case, and he needs protection. So give him a condom. You're not using him. Mike, have a smoke. A Minuteman whistleblower in protective custody is an important coup. Now, I intend to expose the tobacco industry for what it is. Why the sudden interest in the tobacco industry, Barry? It's called a social conscience. These people have been making billions on the lungs of America's youth, peddling their poisonous, addictive products without any remorse whatsoever. Let me have a cigarette. Looks like Luli's stooly days are over. children. She wanted her husband Artie dead, but she should have waited. Whoever killed Lulie Sterling would have done the dirty work for her. But now Ariana was on her way to prison, and I was on my way to Virginia to meet the general. Aside from dealing with irritating photographers, what exactly does a corporate spokesman do? It's the greatest. You get to go to stockholders meetings and make personal appearances and photo ops. What kind of personal appearances? Like, uh, like you show up at a car race with a couple of hot babes dripping off your arms and you give out a few thousand cigarettes and the trophy. And, uh, then you get your picture taken with the racing groupies. And you wave to the crowds and make pithy remarks to reporters. Reporters? Why would reporters want to talk to me? Everybody's gonna want to talk to you after they see your handsome mug staring down at them in Times Square. My mug? In Times Square? You better believe it. When I'm done with you, no one's going to want to look at those sculpted guys in underwear. They're going to want to see Mike Hammer, Minuteman, and take you home for a smoke. In my underwear? No way. And let me tell you something. we got to change that title. I, I don't want people thinking that I'm only good for a minute. Don't worry, sweetheart. You're going to have plenty of chances to prove them wrong. Don't you sweetheart me, pal. I'm an Adam and Eve man, not Adam and Steve. Drive. After nine hours in the car with Ernie Nathan, I was ready to bite his head off. If only Ernie's head was a Boston cream pie. 
We should have taken the plane. At least in the air, it's a felony to smoke. But somehow I found the strength. I hadn't cheated, not even a puff. But I was about to face the ultimate test of will. I was in tobacco country, Virginia, home of the Sterling Plantation, the house that Butts built. Quite a spread. And I wasn't knocked out. Why should I be? My three-pack-a-day monkey paid for half this pad. I was curious to see what they got for my money and more interested in the man they called the General. Place, isn't it, Mr. Hammer? Yeah, smokers must have coughed up a lot of bucks to build it. Ah, good morning, Mr. Nathan. Good morning, Joe. Sir? Good morning. Please come in. Cigarette? Uh, thanks, Nigel. Oh, uh, no thanks. The general is waiting for you to stay. Great. Buckle up. General. Hmm? Oh, Nathan. How nice of you to report in. Sir, allow me to introduce you to Mike Hammer, the Minuteman. Welcome to Mount Vernon, Mr. Hammer.